Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. Welcome to the first sewing vlog of 2023. So Happy New Year. I hope you all really, really well and have got through the festive season in one piece. Welcome to 2023. New Year, new start and all that but we will just carry on as we always have. <laughs> anyway, I am here today to do a pattern review for you. And this review is for my last make of 2022, which is the Closet Core Nyx dress, which is what I'm wearing today. I will insert some better pictures for you because I have taken some photos, um, but I thought I would put it on today so you can see it in the flesh, so to speak. So I'm going to tell you all about this dress. I've made loads of notes because there's a lot to talk about and I can't remember everything and I don't want to miss anything because I have done a few sort of changes and I've got a few a few different sort of little opinions regarding the dress and how it come together and everything but I thought you'd be interested to hear all about it so let's get started. So this gorgeous dress has been on my to make pile for quite some time ever since it was released actually which was last year now and it's Closet Core's latest release which is a bohemian style 70s style dress tunic or blouse there's three different versions i made the dress version and it's inspired by the amazing stevie nicks from fleetwood mac so yeah it just really appealed to me because this is my total you know style at the moment so i knew i wanted to make the dress and just after Christmas, obviously we'd got through Vlogmas and got through the initial festive part of Christmas and there's that lull between Christmas and New Year, isn't there, where you haven't even got a clue what day it is anymore. And I'd got the time off work and I thought, you know, it's going to be a great opportunity to do some sewing. So I pulled out this pattern and thought, right, I'm going to make it. And I was looking for fabric in my stash because it does say that it takes between... 4.75 and five and a half meters dependent on which size you make so i thought i'm going to need at least you know because i have to lengthen everything as well and i thought i'm going to need around five meters of fabric but five meters of appropriate fabric that i can wear at this time of year because a lot of my big pieces of fabric that would be appropriate for this pattern a very summery which obviously i don't want when it's winter so i did find this in my stash which i'll stand up and show you so this is a linen chambray by lady mcelroy i can't remember the name of it but i will put a link to it in the description box down below that i bought last year and i did have around five meters of this so thought this would be perfect it goes with the style and i had enough of it so I knew that this would be perfect for it but before we go into my specifics I thought I'll tell you a little bit more about the pattern itself first. So I've already mentioned that you get three options with this pattern. You've got view A which is the dress, view B which is a tunic which is very like the upper portion of the bodice of the dress but then it's got a little peplum on and then view C which is a much more simple blouse. It's aimed at a confident beginner and you need to use light to medium weight woven fabrics so obviously dependent on the fabric that you choose will will give you a very different aesthetic from the finished garment because if you choose something with a little bit more structure like a cotton then it's going to be quite blousy and quite poofy whereas if you go for something with a little bit more drape to it like a viscose or even a georgette something like that then it's going to be a lot more flowy and ethereal so i went for something that did have a little bit of body and a bit of more structure to it but still has the drapiness which is this linen chambray which is one of lady mcelroy's bases and i absolutely love it it's such a gorgeous base because it's a bit heavier than a viscose, but it drapes like a viscose and it's just so lovely to wear. So the pattern comes in sizes 0 to 32, which equates to a bust of 31 to a 60 inch bust and hips of 33 to 48 inch. That's the body measurement sizes. Um, I haven't mentioned the waist sizes because it's cinched in with elastic anyway. So the waist is, is really irrelevant, to be honest. It's drafted for a height of five foot six and the finished measurements are a bust of 44.7 inches. Really not sure why it's 0.7, but anyway, 44.7 inches to 73.4 inches and the finished 
hips measurement is 44 to 74.2 inches. So you can see straight away there is a lot of ease in this garment. And because of that, I really had to think about what size I was going to make because although it's designed to be loose and flowy and I do like to have a fair bit of ease in my garments, particularly at the minute, straight after Christmas, I didn't want to have something that was too big, if that makes sense, and that drowned me. And obviously I'm quite tall and can get away with that to a certain degree. I know people that are more petite tend to worry about being overwhelmed by the clothes. So that is something to bear in mind that there is in the smallest size, in the size zero, there is 13 inches of ease around the bust. And there is the same in the hips actually as well. So there is a lot, a lot of ease to take into consideration. Fabric requirements for the dress, as I mentioned, it says that you need 4.75 to 5.5 metres. That's of the 58 inch width fabric. If you are using the narrower width, then obviously you're going to need a lot more. And obviously, if you've got any design in that that's a one way design or a directional print or has a nap to it, stripes, etc., then you're going to need even more. So it, it's a fairly fabric hungry dress, which anything that's tiered and has bishop sleeves and is blousy and loose fitting is going to use more fabric. So there's that to bear in mind as well when it comes to choosing your fabric. The tunic needs two to two and a half metres and the blouse 1.25 to 2.5 metres. Interestingly, it does say in the instructions that the skirt measures 34.7 inches and that's regardless of the size that you choose. So that again is something to bear in mind if you are much more petite in height you probably will need to shorten this skirt a fair bit, I would say, dependent on the length that you want. It is designed to be a midi to sort of maxi length dress. I love maxi dresses anyway, um, for winter and for summer. I think they're just great and I love wearing them. So for me, it wasn't an issue, but obviously it's really good that they, that they do put that in the instructions. For me, for my particular dress, once I've got all that information together, I could then set about thinking about how I'm going to make this to fit me. My body measurements put me at a size 12, but bearing in mind the amount of ease that we've just been talking about, I decided to go down two sizes and I dropped to a size eight. And that's the size that I cut out and have made up. The body measurements for a size eight is a 35 inch bust, which I'm not, <laughs> certainly not at the minute. I, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the size. I think, it, I think it fits me really well and I really love it. So I'm really pleased with that. I used just under four metres of the linen chambray. As I mentioned, the recommendations are about 4.75 for the size that I chose. However, I didn't need all that. And I used this as a directional print as well. Although it looks in the images that I will put in for you that it's non-directional, I did think that it actually is directional when I had a really good look at the pattern on the fabric. So I made sure that all my pieces were following the right way, if that makes sense, so that I didn't get them twisted or whatnot. And yeah, I ended up using just under four metres. Well, I say that, but I did end up recutting one side of the bodice because, you know, when you've got, you've got your fabric sort of folded over, so you're cutting out mirror images. And when it's a boldish print like this, it, why does it always end up that the pattern repeat ends up exactly the same. So I had this side here, this bodice pattern here where I've got flower boob. Well, actually it's not, it's, it's just off center, which is fine. I ended up with exactly the same piece on this side. So I'd got two flower boobs, which just didn't really work. So I ended up cutting out another right, as you're looking at it, it might even be left actually, this side of the bodice, I ended up cutting out a new piece so that I could position the pattern piece so that they didn't end up looking like they were just identical fronts, if that makes sense. And I'm pleased that I did that. I also ended up recutting the sleeves, but we'll come to the reason why in a little while. But bearing in mind that these sleeves are huge, it um, it tells you that, you know, I, I got all this dress and more out of a five metre piece of fabric. So I adjusted the bodice by one inch to lengthen it, which is my standard adjustment to all sewing pattern bodices to be honest because I'm long bodied and I generally need it. I would say in wearing of this dress I could probably do with maybe another half inch 
length in the bodice and the reason I say that is because I feel that this dress needs to be more blues on it over the top and it needs to blues on over the waist and it can't do that on me because of where the waist hits me if that makes sense so I think with that extra half inch of length in the bodice it would allow the top to just blues on a little bit more over the waist which would be in keeping more with the design so bearing in mind the skirt is 34.7 inches long i made no adjustments to the length of it because i just wanted to see how it sewed up once i had lengthened the bodice and i think i've already mentioned that it's drafted for a height of five foot six i'm five foot ten so obviously there's four inches difference so an inch of that was taken out by lengthening the bodice and then the skirt is probably three inches shorter than it's designed to be on me it does hit me i would say probably a bit of a funny length because i think it would be better if it was full maxi um i've worn it with my ankle boots and the sort of amount of bare leg that you have between the top of your ankle boots and the bottom of the dress is probably not very not the right amount of it i would want it to be if that makes sense i think with hindsight i would probably add on a little bit to the tiered skirt in my next version of this dress which there probably will be another one because i do like it a lot and to do that i think i would add on probably a half to three quarters of an inch to each tiered pattern piece and then it would distribute that extra length out fairly between the tiers the tiers are all identical in depth so you know it's a three-tiered skirt and the um the depth of each tier is exactly the same which i think gives a really nice feel to it the skirt has the perfect amount of volume in it i will say i think it's drafted absolutely brilliantly and when i say that you sort of think well it's only a skirt made up of rectangles that are all gathered in so what kind of drafting is involved however what i mean by that is the top tier is made up of two pattern pieces there's just your two side seams on the top tier but it's only slightly bigger than your hip size so you haven't got loads and loads of fabric billowing around where your hips are which i think is brilliant because that's one of the things with tiered gathered skirts is that they can sometimes just give you so much volume around your upper hips that they make you feel real you know larger than you are and that's one thing i'm always conscious of so what i would say about this skirt is that the top tier is is pretty bang on with the amount of gathering that it needs in not giving you know giving you that sort of too much around your your hips vibe going on the second tier is also made up of two pattern pieces cut on the fold but the bottom tier is actually four so that's where the volume really comes in and it just produces such a gorgeous flowing skirt that's got the most amazing amount of swoosh right at the bottom and i can see myself making this as a separate skirt just creating a simple waistband for it, it could be something as simple as lengthening the top tier by two or three inches and shearing that so you know you've got like a sheared elastic waistband of a tiered skirt i think that would look really nice for summer but i can see myself definitely making this separately as a, as, as a skirt and i think that would have been a really good option that closet core could have added in to their options for this pattern it would have been really nice to see that but it's not something that's going to be too difficult to draft yourself so sleeves then let's move on to the sleeves so i added an inch on to the length of these sleeves which is a standard measurement that i tend to do for most sleeve patterns now unfortunately i didn't take a picture of what this looked like in full when i had completed the dress but i will show you a picture here of what the finished sleeves looked like on me now i do have long arms and one of my bugbears about ready to wear clothing has always been that the arm length is always too short on me no matter what size i go for i tended when i used to buy ready to wear always buying things very oversized just to get the length of the sleeves right for me so one of the things about sewing my own is I can make the sleeve length the right length for me. And generally, I have found that if I add up to an inch on each sleeve pattern, 
in most patterns that's usually enough for me sometimes a little bit more it just depends but generally around about an inch is enough well an inch on this pattern was nowhere near enough as you can see by the image that I've inserted and at this point I'd finished the dress tried it on and although I loved the dress the sleeves really disappointed me because of the length of them now my daughter was still here at the time she hadn't gone back home but she did say she thought it looked fine but fine's not good enough for me and they hit me just at that point on your sort of upper wrist where it feels really irritating and you're wanting to constantly pull them down. So I sort of ummed and out about it thinking, do I recut these sleeves? Because I knew that I had enough fabric to recut them. But I had French seamed them in. I'd French seamed the whole dress and I'd French seamed around the armhole. So it was a big job to, well, it wasn't a big job, but it was a big enough job to unpick all those seams and take the sleeves off and then redo them. So I slept on it overnight and then decided that that's what, exactly what I was going to do. Now, the original sleeve is a, you know, it's a really wide bishop sleeve pattern piece. But the thing that I don't understand if I'm perfectly honest, is that what they have you do is there's three pleats on the bottom raw edge of the sleeve. And, you know, you've got this really wide bishop sleeve with lots of volume. And then she has you pleat a lot of that volume out in three separate pleats. I don't understand why, if I'm perfectly honest. It seems a bit pointless because what you do then is you, um, you have a separate cuff piece, which you then attach to that pleated down sleeve and then you put elastic in that for around your wrist so the original sleeve I did exactly as the pattern told me to do but you couldn't even see the pleats because they were lost in all the elastication that happens and how it gathers in to fit your wrist so I couldn't really understand what the purpose was of that if I'm perfectly honest and I still can't get my head around why you would create a voluminous sleeve like that and then remove half of the volume in pleats that are lost in the final articulation of the sleeve. It just doesn't make sense to me. I did Google a few images and I will put a couple of images in because when you look at the pattern image, the sleeve is quite billowy over the wrist, which is what you would expect it to be in this kind of boho dress. And when I looked at images that people have, have put on Instagram that have made this dress, the sleeves were coming up short on them as well. And so I'm not convinced that this is just because I have ridiculously long arms, which we all know. I think I think the sleeve is a little bit short, if I'm honest. And that's just my opinion. But anyway, when I'd slept on this overnight, I decided to take the sleeves off and recut them. And I added on four inches to the sleeve. Yes four inches which is an enormous amount but that has given me a sleeve that hits me right so this is now the length of the sleeve I've got the volume that billows over the wrist which is exactly how I think this sleeve should be but the other thing that I've changed about this sleeve is I have uh, omitted the cuff piece because I decided I didn't want to lose all the volume in the sleeve as it hits around the cuff I wanted to keep that volume because I think that is part of the design so what I did was the sleeve pattern is sort of curved at the bottom raw edge and I I first squared it across at the bottom at the bottom you know the deepest curved bit because I wasn't going to be putting the pleats in and then I added on the four inches to that but I split it between in a couple of places throughout the sleeve because obviously it does taper towards the wrist anyway. I omitted the cuff because basically all you're doing when you add the cuff on is you are putting elastic in. It's an extra step that's not necessary if you're not putting the pleats in, if that makes sense. So all I did was I folded over the raw edge of the hem of the sleeve by a quarter of an inch, then folded it over again by three quarters of an inch so I lost an inch there, if that makes sense. And then I inserted the elastic, which is exactly what you do with the cuff if you do the cuffed version. And I'm really happy with it because now I've got the volume that I think the design actually should have. And yeah, it's it's much better. But those were the sort of main changes that I made to the sleeve. All in all, I would say I do love this dress. The bodice comes together so well. You have a burritoed yoke at the back. I don't know if you even know if I've mentioned that, but it does have a yoke at the back with gathering into it. 
and it is all very very neat inside you've got gathering at the shoulders here and then the front you have buttons and rouleau loops with bias binding that goes all the way around the neckline and the inside of it is all totally enclosed really neat it's a really quite well detailed instructions on how to encase all your raw seams inside of the bodice to make it all really neat but there are a few little issues in the pattern instructions before we get to that one of the errors that i did make is it does tell you once you once you've constructed your bodice you are supposed to baste the two front bodice pieces together at the raw edge at the bottom but you are supposed to butt them up to each other I didn't I overlapped mine which means that when I have done the rouleau loops and buttons they are slightly off and that's not how it should be it should actually be in alignment down the center but that but that is completely my fault for not reading the instructions properly and um you know that's the result of that so um it's fine I am not unpicking all this to redo it because I think it's okay the ruler loops are a bit fiddly because they're quite, you know, they're quite narrow. But as long as you're using a lightweight, lightish weight fabric, you should be fine with that. And just take your time on, on it. You know, the instructions are very detailed. They're very good. But, you know, putting the bodice together does take some time. Issues in the instructions. This is my bugbear with some of the proofreading that goes on. Now, I do know that most of your indie pattern designers have... Um, groups of testers that test their patterns and offer feedback etc and I'm really surprised that despite that these things still come through into the finished product and you know we all want to support small businesses we all want to support our favorite indie designers you know this is a cracking pattern I love closet car they have some great patterns they're really well drafted they're really well detailed they you know they're not basic they offer you something a little bit different and they have really interesting construction techniques but this really falls down in the instructions you know and i'm willing to pay for that but i expect a professional um product that you know has absolutely perfect instructions and little errors that should have been picked up are you know are picked up and, and sorted out so the issues that i found in the instructions there's a spelling error on page four it's here confident beginner confident is ent not ant um now <laughs> sorry i know that sounds really pedantic but i think you know spell checks are um available aren't they for all these kinds of things and i do find it frustrating that they're not used so yeah it should say confident not confident i know it's a minor thing but as i say when you're paying a lot of money for a professionally produced product you do expect things like that to be sorted um oh i do but that's my opinion um next up binding to the neck on page 20 right so when it comes to the binding around the neck the binding piece is a two inch wide rectangle which obviously you fold over press it and then the instructions tell you to stitch it at five eighths of an inch around the neckline with the raw edges together and then you fold it over to the inside and it should then cover the raw edge of the binding it doesn't cover the raw edge of the binding i thought i just made an er error in either the the cutting out of this pattern piece or the stitching that I'd not stitched it at five eighths of an inch and I'd maybe stitched it at four eighths of an inch or something like that. But again, when I looked up pattern reviews, I read a couple of reviews that, of other people that have made this pattern that found exactly the same, that when you turned the binding over to the inside, the raw edge was still peeking out. So what it means is that you have to then go in and cut that down. It wasn't a big deal, but I think the fact that I did that as well as finding some other people found the same thing it means that maybe we just need to adjust that a little bit so that it it definitely does cover the raw edge and that you're not having to cut that seam down and risk cutting into your bodice when you've done all that work. So that's always my biggest fear because I've done it before. You know, when you're snipping a seam down and you accidentally cut into your, your, your sort of facing fabric and you think, oh no. Um, but anyway, that was that was one observation with that. And the only other piece in the instruction that's incorrect as well is on page 26 where it tells you to create the cuff. Now, obviously, when I redid the sleeves, I omitted the cuffs altogether anyway. 
but obviously the first time around I did make the cuffs and the instructions tell you, I've circled it here, this is your cuff pattern piece here and the instructions tell you to fold them right sides together but actually that's not what you're doing and even the image shows you that you fold them wrong sides together. So again it's a simple a simple thing but it should have been picked up in the pattern testing phase and you know and amended so apart from that you know there's just a few little things that i think really should have been picked up and and sorted out apart from that the rest of it is really really good really detailed there's lots of information in the instructions for you it's quite in depth i did get this pattern made in a day um less than a day to be honest and that's from tracing off the pattern, cutting out the fabric and getting it all sewn up. And plus that was with French seaming as well. But because I decided to recut the sleeves, it meant that obviously it took me another half day to unpick all the sleeves, redo the new sleeves, put them in and then hem it. There is an awful lot of gathering in this dress. And I'm going to be honest, I hate gathering. I find it so monotonous, <laughs> so time consuming. But I love the finished result. I love gathered dresses. I just think they just look so nice. They're so easy to wear. They're so floaty. They're so forgiving. And especially post Christmas when I have eaten so much that, you know, um, the diet's really got to start soon, to be honest, to get myself back in shape for spring. But these are the kinds of dresses that I do like to wear. So I have to have that trade off that, you know, if I want to wear it, I've got to do the work, which means the gathering. I know there are lots of different tutorials out there in how to speed up gathering, how to make it easier. I know Sam from Frugalissima has one on her channel around using elastic to gather. But honestly, I would have used so much elastic to gather this that I ended up just doing it the old fashioned way with long basting stitches and yeah doing it that way but I love the end result I absolutely love the end result and now I've fiddled about with the sleeves and you know getting it exactly how I want it then I, you know I know the mistakes I've made that I won't repeat for the next version and what I want to change for the next version I, I'll probably make it just a little bit longer I do love it. I think it's really nice. I would love to make the tunic version as well. I think that would be really lovely. We, you know, the short sleeved, because you can have short sleeves on it as well, th that you can, um, you know, pair with a nice pair of capri trousers and sunnies and a little necktie and strolling along a promenade somewhere in the south of France. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? But anyway, that's not happening right now. <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, I, I can see myself making that version as well for spring and summer. But yeah, all in all, it's a really good pattern. I do love it and I'm so glad I made it and I'm so happy with my finished dress. That was a long detailed review for you, wasn't it? I hope you found it useful and let me know if you've made this dress, what you think to it, if you do anything any differently, if you can give me any tips so that I could improve it for the next version I make. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So I hope you've enjoyed chatting away with me today and I will see you all again really soon. Take care. Bye.